Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to watching us online. You are a part of our community. We're, we're so glad you tuned in. Before I get started, can I give some love? Can I show some love to our amazing senior pastors, Pastor Andy and Sharon Mead, for giving me this opportunity to hang out with you guys this weekend, okay? So, so uh, we are in a series called Giants of Faith, where we've been looking at biblical characters, and we've been asking the question, what would these people say to us today? What would these characters say to us in the race of life? What advice would they give us? So our theme verse is found in Hebrews chapter 12, and it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And here's the part I really want to focus on for today's lesson. And let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, okay? So, so today we're going to look at a giant of faith, and we're going to see what he has to say to us. We're going to look at the character Jonah. So if you're taking notes or following along on your outline, or you can also follow along on your social media platforms, you can title part six of this series, The Reckless Runner. The Reckless Runner, Jonah. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to run away from something that was happening in your, in your life? <laughs> Have you ever been dealing with something or something kind of came at you and you're kind of evaluating the situation and you think to yourself, man, that should be easier for me just to run away. Here's a better one. We probably all have, have had this one. Have you ever been caught up in a conversation with a friend or a coworker that just keeps talking way too much and they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and you just stand there and you like nod your head like you're listening to them but the whole time you're thinking to yourself, man, I wish they would stop talking. I'm about to slap them over the side of the head right now. They don't stop talking. I wish I could just run away from this situation. Have you ever been in that situation before? <laughs> if you haven't been in that situation, then you're the person that talks too much. Just to let you know, I'm just joking. You don't talk too much. We all like to listen to you. We don't. Okay. Um, but recently in my life, I had a moment where I felt like, man, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I'm not the best person for this. If I could run away, this would be the option right now. Okay. So Aaron and I, on May 16th, 2018, around 5.11 p.m., we welcomed our beautiful little girl, Kingsley J. Gaines into the world. I got some pictures of her. Oh my gosh, isn't she the best thing ever? Oh my gosh, I just love her so much. Okay, so we are so blessed to have a happy and good sleeping little girl. And here's the crazy part, right? Never have I thought I could love so deep until I met Kingsley. Never have I ever thought. But, there's a big old but. But, Babies, babies are hard. Can I get an amen? amen? Babies are hard. So, so, but Kingsley has been at Georgia's, but they're hard, hard. So after we had Kingsley, she's a perfect angel at the hospital. Just did great. Then the day came, and this is where I kind of had my moment of like, wow, maybe I'm not cut out for this. The day came where they told us to take her home. And I'm like, wow, they're trusting us with this creature right now. This is... <laughs> This is nuts, okay? So, so then I said to myself, well, you know what? 
I've done a lot of other things in my life, raising a baby. This finna be a breeze, you know. <laughs> That's what I was thinking to myself. And then we got home, okay. Then we got home. Then Nana came home with us. Nana is Aaron's mom, also known as Kingsley's favorite person on the planet. You know, she has like a special touch. We're still trying to figure it out. So Nana was home with us. Everything's going good. Then Nana had to leave. And right when Nana left, the atmosphere changed. <laughs> Things changed in the house. Kingsley started to get fussy. She started to cry. Midnight rolls around, still crying, still having a hard time. 1 a.m. rolls around, still crying, still having a hard time. 2 a.m. rolls around, still crying, still having a hard time. Aaron's trying to feed her, and I'm like, are those things working? Because she's having a hard time right now. 3 a.m. rolls around, she's still crying, still fussy. So I say, this is my opportunity to be a good husband and a good dad, right? And I'm going to take advantage of this. I know Aaron's exhausted. I'm going to volunteer to stay up with the baby, right? So I walk up to Aaron. I say, Aaron, you look tired. But you look good, too, because you ain't never supposed to tell a woman they look tired, you know. I said, babe, you look tired, but you look good. Um, how about I stay up with the baby, you get some sleep until next time you have to feed her. And in my head, I'm thinking Aaron's not going to do that. She's going to want to stay up with her. Psych, was I wrong? <laughs> she said, all right, and handed me Kingsley and went to the bedroom. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this creature? I don't know what to do, so I'm just holding her. I'm singing to her. You know, then I had this idea, maybe she needs a diaper change. So I said, all right, let's go to the nursery. I go to the nursery, I put her on the changing table. You know, I'm singing to her, my best, you know, I'm singing to her. And then all of a sudden, as I'm changing her, take off of her diaper, all of a sudden, as I'm changing her in my periphery, I see the biggest cockroach ever <laughs> crawl into the room. And I hate bugs. And I'm thinking, oh, shoot, this bug is out to get Kingsley, you know. <laughs> so, so I have a decision. I said, I can't leave her on the changing table. So I pick up this naked baby. I got her in my arm. And then I'm about to step on the cockroach, but I don't have any shoes on, so that's nasty. So I don't want to do that. So I do the next best option. I start grabbing books from the bookshelf and just tossing it at the roach. <laughs> just tossing it. Then Erin busts out the bedroom. She's like, what's going on out here? And I'm like, I'm trying to change the diaper and kill a roach at the same time. <laughs> in that moment, I thought to myself, Maybe I'm not cut out for this, right? Man, if I, could, if I could run away, man, come on. But then, check this out. So Aaron and I were stressed out. We're tired. Then I had this moment. I take a break, and I felt the peace of God remind me, you are made for this. You're made out for this, okay? So long story short, I killed a bug with some cleaning spray. It's just, it was my only option, okay? So, so then Aaron went back to bed, got some sleep, and I sat on the couch. Check this out. I sat on the couch with Kingsley, and she fell asleep on my chest, and it was the best moment ever, you know? You know, I was so paranoid. I was like, I ain't going to sleep. I don't want to roll over, you know? So, you know, but, hey, but here's the truth. Here's the truth. Doesn't life throw things at you, and you feel like, man, I can't handle this. I'm not cut out for this. It would be better for me to run away than to deal with this. See, this is where we see Jonah, which leads me to my tweetable thought today. My tweetable thought today is this. Run towards God because God ran towards you first. Run towards God because God ran towards you first. See, Jonah is the story of the famous runner. He ran away. God spoke to him, and he went the opposite direction. Check this out. Jonah 1.1 says this. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. See, real fast, Jonah is a prophet of God. So he's a prophet of God. That means he hears from God, he interprets what God says, then he goes and speaks it to the people. That's his occupation. That's his job. He hears from God, he interprets what God says, and he speaks it to the people. Now, check this out. The name Jonah has an interesting name. And in that day, people's names represented their characteristic. The name Jonah means dove. Not to be confused with the soap, but... The bird. He was like a bird, and he was a small little bird. And what do birds do when the storm, before a storm comes? They fly away. They get away. So he's a prophet of the Lord who tends to fly away. He's kind of insecure. But check it out. Son of Emitite, his dad's name. His dad's name is truth. Emitite means truth. So he's, the, he's a prophet from God, and God has given him a word of truth to tell the people. But Jonah is afraid. Jonah is insecure 
And check out what happens next. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come before me. Jonah receives this word. He got all these things going on. And I can kind of picture Jonah praying. You know, he's praying and he's singing, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. I auditioned for the worship team one time. And I, didn't make the, I didn't make it, so whatever. I guess all dreams don't come true, whatever. Uh, but I can picture him singing and praying and all this stuff. And he's like, God, use me, Lord. Send me, Lord. I want to do whatever you want me to do, Lord. And the Lord is like, all right, go to Nineveh. And Jonah's like, come again. You know? He's like, wait one second. I didn't ask for that. I know I was praying, but I didn't ask for that. See what happens next. Verse 3, it says this. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. God, Jonah heard from God and ran away. And it just leads me to ask you a question today. It leads me to ask you a question. What in your life are you running away from that God wants you to run towards? What in your life are you running away from that God actually wants you to run towards? See, see, here's the thing with Jonah. Jonah hears his assignment and he's afraid, which leads me to the first thing I think Jonah would tell us. First thing I think Jonah would tell us is this. God doesn't always tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. God doesn't always tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. See, sometimes when God speaks, it's not what you want to hear. Sometimes when God speaks, it's not exactly the thing that you want to hear. And the truth is this, there's a Jonah in all of us. There's a Jonah in all of us. We all have these moments of wanting to run away and not deal with certain things that are going on in our lives. Now, it's easy to look at the narrative of the story and judge Jonah. And be like, man, I can't believe that guy running away from God. Lack of faith having, not trusting God, doubtful. Clearly, he's never done growth track before. <laughs> Lack of faith having self, Jonah. It's easy to do that. But, but here's the thing. Here's the truth. Can I be honest? I actually can relate to Jonah because I love God. God's my everything. And I feel like I hear from God pretty regularly. And sometimes God tells me things. And it's not the thing I want to do. Sometimes God speaks to me and I'm like, God, you, you tripping on that one. I don't want to do that. See, and, and I also want you to get this picture in your head. It's not like God said, hey, Jonah, um, go down to vacation Bible school this year. Go help out at VBS and teach the kids how to do the macaroni pictures. It's not like he asked them to do that. He said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. I want to send you to Nineveh so you can have a better understanding of Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, which is modern-day Iraq. It still has problems, right? Assyria was a barbaric place, a ruthless place. Like, the best illustration I can use to describe how barbaric it, it was is like this. When they used to conquer cities, they would chop off the heads of all the soldiers, right? Then they would make pyramids surrounding the city so the women and children will know that Assyria came and conquered. They were a barbaric group of people. Like their NBA finals was chopping off people's heads. That's different than watching LeBron, you know. It's a little different. You know? so, so Jonah's like thinking to himself, um, Nineveh, uh, I'm just a birdie man, remember? Boo, you know. Like, like, why you got me going there, God? I don't think that's where I want to go. So what does Jonah do? He dips. He runs away. He's like, God, you got the wrong guy. And Jonah's like, I'm going to Tarshish. So to get a better understanding of this, Nineveh is 500 miles up north from where Jonah was. Tarshish was 2,500 miles down south from where he was. He went the opposite direction. Jonah's like, I'm not messing with those wildlands in the north. I'm going to go down south to Tarshish. Tarshish is known as the city of gold. Tarshish is a vacation spot. I'm going to sit on the beach and sip on my drink, and I'll evangelize to those people. <laughs> he goes the opposite direction of where God told him to go. He said, I'm not cut out for this place. See, Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. 
But that's where God needed him to go. Just because that's not where you want to go, just because that's not the thing you want to deal with in your life, that does not mean that's not, that's not the thing that God needs you to address. Or God needs you to go. And I think, I, think the reason, I think the reason why we find ourselves confused or upset or wondering where our purpose is in life is because we confuse what we want with what we need. We think if I get what I want, then I'll be happy. And God is far more interested in addressing what you need than rather than what you want. See, you may say you want you want a new marriage. But God is saying you need to get in some counseling. You may be saying, I want new kids. Can't take back your kids. Sorry. <laughs> but God is saying you just need to start praying for them. All my single people. You may be saying, I want to be married. And God is saying you need to be okay with being single. You need to be okay with who you are in God because no person you marry will ever change who you are. You may say, I want to have financial blessing. And God's saying, you just need to start tithing. See, there's a lot of things that we want, but it's not always what we need. Now, I'm not here to say, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that God doesn't want to give you the desires of your heart. I'm not saying that God doesn't want to give you what you want. But what I am saying is before God can give you what you want, there's some things that God needs you to work on. There's some things that God needs you to address. See, see I want a hashtag. HSB, hot summer body. <laughs> I've been working on this thing for about eight years now. Still ain't there because I love pizza too much. I have a friend who comes to our church, his name is Spencer. He, he um, is giving me this new lifestyle change plan, and he ke try, keeps me accountable. But the crazy thing about it is one night Aaron and I were in our private house our private house eating this some delicious pizza and then all of a sudden I got a text message from Spencer that said pizza looks good but those abs don't I'm like how does he know I mean a pizza is there cameras in my house like I don't know how he babe Spence is watching us you know I was freaked out you know you know what I want Spencer to say to me is this Jacob pizza chicken wings and beer would give you the body that you want that's what I want him to say. But what I need him to say is change your lifestyle, change the way you eat, and you'll get the results that you want. See, see, just because you want something doesn't mean you need it. And may I ask today, what area of your life do you need to start addressing your need instead of your wants? See, first thing I think Jonah says to us, God doesn't always tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Second thing I think Jonah would tell us is this, beware of the other routes. Beware of the other routes. Jonah hears from God to go to Nineveh, but Jonah says, I'm going to Tarshish. Verse continues, it says, Jonah went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Now, there's something I really want to point out here. There's something I really want to just throw out there. See, God spoke to Jonah. Jonah heard God. Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh. Jonah says, I'm going to Tarshish. God speaks to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah hears God. Jonah says, I'm going to Tarshish. God speaks to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah hears God. He says, I'm going to Tarshish. Did you know that every single time God speaks to you, there will be an option to go the wrong direction? Did you know that every single time God gives you a pathway, there will be an opportunity to go the opposite way? See, see, Jesus, Jesus put it like this. Jesus says this in Matthew 7, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Jesus says, wide and broad and large are all the routes that we should not go on. Large are the things that you should not do. But narrow is this path that if you run it with perseverance, 
fixing your eyes on Jesus, you achieve what you want. You go where you want. And isn't that so true? Doesn't it seem like there's so many options to do what we don't want to do? I'm going to get in shape. Free donuts all week at work. <laughs> going to have a date night. My spouse. Wrong. Something come up at work. Something happened with the kids. Going to get my finances in order. Psych. Because Virginia has personal property taxes and we forget about it. Come on. He gonna charge me for owning a dog or something. It's, it's crazy. Isn't it true though? Whenever God speaks, there'll always be another route for you to take that would take you in the opposite direction. And you may be like, Pastor Jacob, but how do I know I'm staying on the right route? How do I know I'm going on the route that God has for me? How do I know that? See, here's a truth that I live by every single day that helps me. And can I just be honest today? Can I be honest at church? If I can't be honest at church, where can I be honest at? Here's the truth that I live by every single day of my life. I am one decision away from being just like everyone else. There's nothing special about me. I'm not like some super Christian because I'm a pastor. I have fears, I have doubts. I'm one decision away from being just like anyone else. So I have to be intentional about the way I live my life. I have to be so intentional. And again, can I just be honest again? I just, I just really want to share my heart today. See, the past two months of my life have been just absolutely chaotic. Other than Aaron and I welcoming our little girl into the world, my family has been going through some heartache. A couple of weeks before Kingsley came, my father-in-law, who I greatly loved and admired, passed away. A couple of weeks after Kingsley, Aaron's granddad passed away. So our family's been going through it. Disappointment, aggravation, confusion. And I, and I know I'm the pastor. I'm, I'm a pastor here, and I'm probably, you know, you probably don't expect me to talk like this, but in this past couple of months, I've had these feelings. I have these thoughts. And I've been thinking to myself, God, these other routes look better than the route that I'm on right now. These other things look better because where I'm going right now, I, I don't really understand. See, and I understand Jonah because Tarshish looks way better than Nineveh. So, so, but this is what I have to do. Because sometimes life hits you and life hurts and life is confusing. So this is what I have to do. I'm going to give you three things that I do so I stay, the way I stay intentional about living for God. Here are three things that I do. And I know I'm not typically the most practical preacher on the stage. I'm not like Pastor Andy that on front of the outline he has three awesome points. And on the back of the outline he has six awesome ways to apply it. You know, I'm not normally as awesome like that. But, but I, have, I have three things that I do every single day of my life so I can stay intentional about running the way, race that God has for me. Me. And the first one is this, prayer and journaling. Prayer and journaling. I got it on your outline for you. Prayer and journaling. I have to pray. But I'm not like the most spiritual person in the world. I don't have an attention span to like pray for like hours at a time. So what I do is I journal. And I talk to God through my journal. I write to God and I tell God my fears, my doubts, my worries, my concerns, my frustrations, my requests. I send it all. And that helps me to stay focused on him. The second thing that I do is I read my Bible. Because I actually believe that the Word of God has the power to transform a life. And I read the Word of God, and here's the thing. Sometimes I get really busy, and I'm late, and I, and I got other things that are going on. So when I can't read the Word of God, thank God for a Bible app called YouVersion where I can listen to the Word of God. And I listen to God's Word. And here's what I try to do every single day. I don't try to kick off my day listening to a whole bunch of news sources that try to tell me their opinion about how to change the world. I just try to listen to the Bible. I try to get God's Word in my heart because it is the local church. It is Jesus that is the hope of the world. It is Jesus that will solve your problems. It is not some politics, but it's Jesus that will. And so I try to get consumed with the Bible in the morning. And the third thing I do is I surround myself with a community of believers. I surround myself around people who are like-minded like me. And I'm not saying that I don't have people who aren't saved or Christians because I believe we're supposed to be the light of the world. But the people I keep the closest around me are people that I know can encourage me, love on me, 
call me out and call me up. And I have to be intentional because life hurts. Things try to throw us off our route. Don't be deceived. Don't think that life is going to be gravy. It's going to be easy. It hurts and it's hard. And that's why at our church we offer growth track. We do four steps to help you understand that. And that's why we have small groups at our church to help you get in community if you're struggling to find people to surround, positive people to surround yourself with. See, this is what I had to do. And this is what I do to stay focused on where the Lord has called me to go because, like I said, life hits and it hurts and it will like to disable you. It will like to keep you down. Life will love to keep you where you are. But Jesus calls you forward. Jesus calls you up. And friends, you may have a Nineveh in your life, and you know what your Nineveh is. You may have that thing that you're struggling with, you're dealing with, that insecurity, that loneliness, that fear, that worry, that anxiety. You know what your Nineveh is, and God has been calling you to go to Nineveh. And you've been making excuse after excuse to go the other route, to go the other direction. And I want you to know something. I want you to know something that is so important. Friends, if God's calling you, go, calling you to go to Nineveh, he will not let you go by yourself. God will not send you there by yourself. Philippians 1.6 declares, being confident of this, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion. Until the day of Christ Jesus. Friends, if God spoke it, he's faithful to complete it. He's faithful. Don't give up yet. Don't cash in yet. Don't lose hope yet. If you got breath in your lungs, then God's not done with you. See, the first thing I think Jonah would say to us, God doesn't always tell us what we want to hear, but what we need to hear. The second thing that Jonah would say is be aware of the other routes. And my third and my final thought that I think Jonah would say to us is this, grace finds you even when you don't expect it. Grace finds you even when you don't expect it. Narrative says God speaks to Jonah. Jonah goes to the port of Joppa. He hops on a boat heading to Tarshish, literally heading the opposite direction. Then the Bible says something so interesting. Then the Bible says something so interesting. Jonah chapter 1 verse 4 says, Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Wait, wait, wait one second. Wait a second here. God sent the storm? But isn't Jesus the one that walks on the water? Isn't Jesus the one when we see, when he sees the winds and the waves crashing against us, he calms the storms in our lives? Doesn't Jesus calm the storm? But text says God sent the storm. Text says God sent the storm to Jonah. And may I just say something today. May I just throw it out there for you to chew on and think about. May I say that the storm you are going through right now isn't because someone or something is out to get you. But may I say the storm that you're going through right now is because God is trying to get your attention. God is trying to get a hold of you. God is trying to get you from running away. And he sent the storm. Narrative continues. It says, all the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. God told Jonah, spoke to Jonah, go to Nineveh. Jonah hears from God. He goes on a boat to Tarshish. Now he's below deck. There's a storm happening above the deck because of his disobedience. Jonah's in a deep sleep. The people above deck are freaking out, having a hard time, don't understand what's happening. Jonah's running from God. Did you know that when you run from God, you're not just hurting yourself, but you're hurting the people around you? Your family needs you to stop running. Your spouse needs you to stop running. Check this out. Check this out. Your dreams, your dreams, the things that God has put in your heart, your dreams need you to stop running. And God will send a storm to wake you up. 
Captain goes below deck, wakes Jonah up. Jonah goes above the deck. He sees everything that's happening, and he knows instantly that this storm is happening because of him. All the sailors on the boat, they, they cast lots to see whose fault this is, and the lot fell on Jonah. The sailors on the ship, they say, why is this storm happening because of you? And Jonah says, it's because I've been disobedient to God. I've been running from God. And then Jonah says something so interesting. Jonah says something so interesting. Jonah says, toss me over the boat and the storm will calm. See, I want to point out something about the poor perception that Jonah had about his God. Because I think we also struggle with this. Jonah's thinking to himself, I ran from God, I disobeyed God, I didn't honor God, I made decisions I shouldn't have made, I hurt people, I done all these wrong things, I got all these problems, and because of that, God sent a storm on me because he's mad at me, God is angry at me. God wants to throw his wrath on me. God says I'm disqualified. God said I messed up too much. So that's why this storm is happening. And so he says to them a second time, throw me overboard. But friends, I want you to see something. Jonah had a poor perception of God. God did not send the storm because he was mad, angry, or upset at Jonah. God sent the storm because he loves Jonah. Because he cares for Jonah. And God aggressively pursues those who he loves. Come on, that is worth clapping to. <laughs> text, says, text says that that with hesitation, sailors toss him overboard. Toss him into the sea. And Jonah's thinking, I'm getting what my sins deserve. Bible says the storm instantly calms. Jonah's falling deeper into the sea, deeper into the sea, deeper in. And he's thinking, my disobedience, me running from God, my problems, this is the reason why I'm drowning right now. Water enters his lungs, can't breathe. But then the Bible says something so unique. The Bible says something so strange. While Jonah is falling deeper into the sea, verse 17 throws out this interesting thing. It says, now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow up Jonah. What? That's weird, gross, and awesome all at the same time. Jonah is thinking that it's over for him, that it's done. He's made too many mistakes. He, he, he signed up for things that he shouldn't have signed up for. He did things that he shouldn't have done. And this is the way God's going to punish him. God's going to let him just die. God's going to let he's done. He's counting out. He's finished. But then grace comes when he didn't expect it. Grace came in an unexpected way. Grace came in an unlikely way. And why a whale? Why a fish? Why this giant fish? Why would God send a fish to swallow up Jonah? And I want you to get the imagery. I want you to get the picture in your head of what this fish represents. Because this fish represents God's grace. And this well swallowed him because God's grace is huge, it's enormous, and it overwhelms us, and it swallows us whole. God's grace comes to us when we don't expect it in an unlikely place. And it's just like Jesus, isn't it? Jesus came to earth as a man. He lived the life we couldn't. Died a death we deserved. Three days later, got back up again and extends his grace to us. Grace comes even when you don't expect it. And you may think to yourself, I messed up too much. I've been divorced. I had these problems. I've had these issues. How could God ever love me after I hurt him, after I violated him? And friends, that's what grace is all about. That's why we have grace, because we can't do it on our own merit. We can't do it by ourselves. But God's grace comes even when we don't expect it. And it swallows us whole. Now, I have, a, I have a final thought that I want to throw out there. And, and Pastor Andy actually gave me this thought a few years back in my life when I was having some hard time. Final thought I have today is this. God does not give you a plan B, but God gives you a new plan A. God doesn't give you a plan B. He doesn't give you the secondary option, but he'll give you a plan A, a new plan A. 
Check this out. Jonah's in the belly of the fish for three days, three nights. Then the well, vom the fish vomits him on, on the sea, which is gross again. <laughs> then chapter 3, verse 1 says this. I want you to see this. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah. What did it say? A second time. God spoke to him again. So you're telling me Jonah was not disqualified because of his sin? No, he's not. And let's see what God says to him. God says, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. So Jonah messed up. Jonah ran away. And our natural thinking is, oh, we, we messed up. We, God don't trust us anymore. God's not for us anymore. So God may tell us to do something, but it's smaller. It, would be, it won't be as significant. But text says God forgave him and God said, just get back on the road again. Get back on your route again. Keep running again. Keep running with perseverance, the race marked out for you. Fixing your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of your faith. Just get up and embrace that grace. Just get up again. The Bible says, then Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Friends, Run towards God because God ran towards you first. And his grace finds you. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, we come to you broken and confused. Yep, I feel it all in the atmosphere. There's people going through some heartache, some frustration. And even like Daniel pointed out earlier, some anxiety, fear. And you've been carrying these things on your shoulders for way too long. Yep, and I feel like the Lord is saying, and you've been going on other routes. You've been going other directions. You've been going the opposite way. And God is saying, just get back on path. Get back on your place. And you may be like, but what about my anxiety? What about my stress? What about my fears? God said, that's okay. Bring that with you. Just run towards me. Just come towards me. Yeah, I feel like the Lord is saying, there's some people in here that need to know God loves them and God's grace is on your life. Don't keep beating yourself up. Don't keep living in regret. God is saying his love has forgiven you. And grace leads you to a new life. Mm -hmm. And there's some people who do have that spirit of Jonah. Reluctant, running away, insecure. And God says, find your confidence in him. Find your hope in him. Yeah, and there's some people who keep running away from your dreams, and God is instantly saying, stop running from your dreams. Stop it right now. You may be in here today, and you're like, Pastor Jacob, I don't know this Jesus you keep talking about. I'm not really sure about this God you keep talking about, but he sounds good to me. If you want to make a decision to trust Jesus with your life, you make a decision to follow God, just pray this simple prayer with me right at your chair. The Bible says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. I'm not going to call you up front. I'm not going to, you know, make you stand up, anything like that. But just like right where you are, if you want to make a decision to trust Jesus with your life, pray this prayer with me. Say it, to you, say it in your heart. Even whisper it out loud if you want. Say, Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my mistakes. Overwhelm me with your grace. Today, I run towards you. Today, I trust you with my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise in here.
Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.